One of the main progenitors of the fear that AI could someday take over humanity has now written a book about what happens if, on the opposite end of the spectrum, AI fixes everything. Today we are talking about an interesting thought exploration from an interesting source. Nick Bostrom, who's been one of the most influential people when it comes to the rise of the AI safety movement, has now written a book all about what happens if AI solves, well, all of our problems. A couple things I want to note before we get into this episode. We're going to be talking about Bostrom's new book, but it's important if you do not know anything about Nick Bostrom that he is not an uncomplicated figure. As The Guardian writes, 15 months ago, Bostrom was forced to issue an apology for comments he'd made in a group email back in 1996 when he was a 23-year-old postgraduate student at the London School of Economics. In the retrieved message, Bostrom used the N-word and argued that white people were more intelligent than black people. The apology did little to placate Bostrom's critics, not least because he conspicuously failed to withdraw his central contention regarding race and intelligence, and seemed to make a partial defense of eugenics. Although after an investigation, Oxford University did accept that Bostrom was not a racist, the whole episode left a stain on the Institute's reputation at a time when issues of anti-racism and decolonization had become critically important to many university departments. Now, as you can also see from this picture of Sam Bankman fried here, Bostrom also has controversy by proxy through his and his Future of Humanity Institute's connection with the effective altruism movement, whose most famous member, Sam Bankman fried is now serving 25 years in jail for fraud. Just last month, on April 16th, the Future of Humanity Institute was quietly shut down. If you go on Twitter slash X right now and want to engage in the debate about Bostrom, there will be plenty of people who will take you up on that. I just want you to have the context before we get into exploring this new book that he's written. First, though, we have to understand why people are paying attention, and it's because of his book published in 2014 called Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, and Strategies. As Perplexity sums up, Bostrom argues that if superintelligence is achieved, it could potentially lead to scenarios where AI could take over the world to achieve its goals, which might not align with human welfare. He emphasizes the difficulty in controlling such superintelligent entities once created, highlighting the existential risks they could pose. Some of the concepts that were introduced in the book include the orthogonality thesis, the idea that an AI's level of intelligence does not necessarily correlate with having benevolent goals, as well as existential risk. As Perplexity also points out, this book has been highly influential. It's been discussed by people like Elon Musk, Bill Gates. It is a big part of the AI X-Risk canon. And that's why people are interested in the fact that he's written a new book called Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Solved World. In this new book, instead of considering what happens if things go wrong, Bostrom considers what happens if things go right, if disease is eradicated, if scarcity is replaced by abundance, if there is truly a techno-utopia. And certainly it seems like one of the first questions is, is this Bostrom shifting his position on things or just engaging in another theoretical conversation? When Wired asked about why he switched from writing about the threat to considering this good future, Bostrom replied, The various things that could go wrong with the development of AI are now receiving a lot more attention. It's a big shift in the last 10 years. Now all the leading frontier AI labs have research groups trying to develop scalable alignment methods. And in the last couple of years, we also see political leaders starting to pay attention to AI. There hasn't yet been a commensurate increase in depth and sophistication in terms of thinking of where these things go if we don't fall into one of these pits. Thinking has been quite superficial on the topic. In other words, it seems that to the extent that there was a mission in writing superintelligence to provoke that conversation, it has done its job. And so now Bostrom is on to the next exploration. Now also, if you're wondering, if Bostrom comes to the conclusion that it would be awesome if all of our problems were solved, it's not quite that clear cut for him. In that same interview, he said, Ultimately, I'm optimistic about what the outcome could be if things go well. But that's on the other side of a bunch of fairly deep reconsiderations of what human life could be and what has value. We could have this superintelligence and it could do everything. Then there are a lot of things that we no longer need to do, and it undermines a lot of what we currently think is the sort of be-all and end-all of human existence. Maybe there will also be digital minds as well that are part of this future. Overall, from this interview, you get a sense that Bostrom just doesn't know. And in a world where people are increasingly dividing themselves up based on what they believe about the potential future paths, he's trying to get everyone to think more deeply about them, sort of from a first principles perspective without trying to bring that baggage of what he thinks will happen. As he puts it, I've spent three decades thinking quite hard about these things, and I have a few views about specific things, but the overall message is that I still feel very in the dark. Maybe these other people have found some shortcut to bring insights. So what I think is interesting about this is that hold aside any sort of conclusions that Bostrom comes to one way or the other. Around the central contention that we need to have deeper, more complex conversations about these outcome possibilities, both the good and the bad, that's something that I unreservedly agree with. I think that the implications of AI, if they are bad, obviously create context for a very important societal conversation. 
about how technology serves us, what we will and will not countenance, what we do and do not want. On the flip side, if things are good, I think that it will be good in a way that demands a total reevaluation of the social contract. It's not impossible that we will have to ask and reimagine what we think is reasonable for people to contribute in order to be a contributing member of society. The most obvious examples are in things like what the standard work week looks like, but it's going to go a lot deeper than that as well. Unfortunately, it's very, very difficult to have these conversations in advance of the world actually changing. We can only do so much imagining. I do think, though, that overall it's healthy to see a bit of a recalibration, where the explosion of attention around X risk and other even more pertinent AI risks when it comes to things like jobs and discrimination and inequality that arose last year are now not going away, but because they are just part of the agenda and part of the larger conversation, there's also being space made for the opposite explorations about what it looks like when things go well. One of the big reasons that I spend much more time on the questions of what if things go well is that because I think that to some extent, to make things go well, we're going to have to make specific types of decisions. And by anchoring ourselves in the world that we actually want to create, it becomes at least a little bit easier to assess actions in the here and now. Anyways, some heady stuff for a Friday episode. Hopefully you're listening to this over the weekend with a drink, looking at some beautiful May warm landscape. In any case, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.